All right, today we're going to be doing a Byzantium speedrun. We're going to be looking to get all of the cores, all of the achievements, everything as fast as humanly possible. So let's do this. All right, we start off in the classic Greek situation. Lots of monopolies, four monopolies, debt to the IFC. We have our crappy monarchist leader and a few other bad things, agrarian society, political instability, all kinds of nonsense that's not good for us. So first thing we're going to do, devaluating the drachma, and we're going to place the king under house arrest. As far as what we're building, let's Let's just build some mills. Doesn't matter too much. I want to get as many mills as we can. Let's get the next level of gun, electronic engineering, and production tools. And we'll build some convoys for good measure. Other than that, let's go ahead and delete this line though, and we're going to add this to the gun manufacturing line. <laughs> we start out with a really bad shortage of guns. So yeah, we want to get that fixed. Although we're probably not going to actually fix that in time because we're going to be going to war super, super fast. Basically, as soon as we can switch to fascist, then we can start going for war. So as soon as we get devaluating the drachma done, we're going to go ahead and beeline down the center path here. We want to get all the way down to resurrecting the Magali idea. We're not actually going to do horror and fear right away, which sounds weird because this does get us into a war, but we'll be getting into a war in better ways. All right, the Venezuelists have won the election because we put the king under house arrest. So once we get this done, we'll be able to do that focus now. Okay, time for bring home the exiled Republicans. And we have some PP now, so we're going to go ahead and spend that. We want to get this resurrected absolute social democrat. What this guy does is increase the democracy support so that later we'll be able to actually switch to democracy if we choose to do so. So there is some extra achievements that you can get by doing this, but we're not going to go to democratic for quite a while. We will stay fascist for a significant amount of time. So basically once we've gotten Byzantium already, that's when we'll be able to go ahead and switch to democrat. All right, there we go. Georgios Papandro. And the other stats that he has, the stability and political power gain, those are nice as well. So because we finished the evaluating the drachma this did unlock some decisions to get rid of the debt but actually don't want to do that i'm gonna do this later at least that's my thought <laughs> I don't know, maybe we should just try to pay it off with the small decisions. All right, yeah, let's do it, I give in. I was hoping to just do the illegally default later on once we do switch to fascism, but I think this will actually be better. So we'll click these decisions and get the at least most of the debt paid off. So we wanna be clicking this every time they become available to us. Oh no, we got unlucky RNG and we just had Eleftherios Venizelos pass away. It's not a big deal, although I wish he could have waited literally like two more days because then we could have gotten Ionis Metaxas for a cheaper price. Oh wait, actually, you know what? He would have had to survive until compromise with the monarchists is done. So another 37 or so days, but it's okay. We'll just save our PP for now. Although, you know what? I do want to do improved work conditions right now. So we're going to do that. And then when this becomes available again, we'll, we'll go ahead and do that. All right, compromise with the monarchists is done. That does make the Republicans happy with us. So we can now get Ionis Metaxas. And this guy's very useful. You get a little extra factory output and political power gain, which we do need very very, very badly. So remembering the Anatolian catastrophe is next. And then once we have the PP to do so, we'll do some more of these uh, payments. Although actually, you know what? We do need to save up some PP. So we need to get the chief of the army. We need to get this guy next, actually. All right, venerate the ancient Hellenes is next. And like I said, we're just gonna keep beelining down to resurrecting the Magali idea. All right, we finally have 100 PP. We're gonna take Alexandros Papagos. All right, we're gonna start getting some of these events for the Anatolian fascist doing different things that either decrease or increase our stability. Most of the time, we're going to take the choice that does not decrease democratic support. More payments. All right, so we finished up. Venerate the Ancient Hellenes. That did give us some extra PP, but basically we're going to be saving that for quite a while now. We don't want to spend it on anything because we really need to save up some PP. All right, so now we have one of these. Let's see. Okay, so the first one would decrease stability. The second one would actually decrease fascism support and would increase stability. So that one is much better, and it will then increase the democratic support as well as the EEE goes down. So now we actually have 0% fascism support. It will go up from some other events and we'll probably take the increase next time because we now have almost 70% democratic support. So we're looking really good on the amount of democratic support that we have. Basically, you just want to keep over 60%. All right, so we got negotiations with the EEE. We do want to take the first decision here that will allow us to turn fascism soon. So we're going to do the resurrecting the Magali idea right away. This should cancel after 
roughly 20 days or so. And we're still doing these debt payments. It's taking forever though, because each one takes 60 days. Okay, we got the Heraklion Convention. We do want to invite the original Savra signatories. All right, so 23 days in, no good can come of this. The convention must be canceled. And there we go, that will bypass. And now we can do Horror and Fear, but we're not actually going to. We do need to wait until we actually switch fascists now. We are still democratic. So now we can do this part of the tree. So I like this path more, and I'm going to try to get to the bedrock of Balkan financial stability as soon as possible. If we can influence some of the Balkan states, we get a lot of factories from that. So I'm going to try to improve with like Yugoslavia, Romania, Hungary, Austria, Albania, and Turkey. You can get factories from all of them. Actually, you know what? I think Czechoslovakia counts as well. Let's take a look at this. Oh, yep. Czechoslovakia does count. So we can get a lot of factories from a lot of different people through that focus. So we're going to go this route. And let's see. All right. We got the EEE launching a coup. So we're going to take the first decision once again. This will cause us to change to fascism. So we can take this decision right away. Befriend the communists. We do want to do that. That's going to be very helpful for us. It's going to build extra stability and war support and give us an extra recruitable population factor as well as extra stability there. So we do have another factory now. I'm just going to put it on more guns because we really badly need guns. So you see here we do have the decision now to hold the national re referendum if we wanted to. We don't actually want to do that though. But now that we're fascist we can do a justification. So we're going to do a justification on Albania that's only going to take 95 days with the claimed state. We could potentially do a retake core state but it doesn't really matter. This is just going to increase world tension faster and yeah that's not really that helpful to us. So at least right now let's just do Albania because we do want to take Albania anyways. So this is a good way to be able to get them incorporated into our little growing empire. So 95 days and now we're going to keep doing probably like one or two more of the small payments and then we'll do a bunch of these large payment decisions as fast as we can. Okay and I'm going to go ahead and get our troops grouped. We do need to do one other thing too. We need to do tip of the spear. We Even though I would like to get state serves the military, tip of the spear is going to give us an extra naval invasion capacity. Actually let's think about this. We don't necessarily need tip of the spear right now. I don't know how long we would keep state serves the military. We will need tip of the spear later. Okay let's just do state serves the military right now because right now we don't actually need any troops for a naval invasion. We are just going to be joining the Axis. So let's let it run a day and then we can join. There we go. And so we're going to leave one troop in Greece and this troop is just going to put it right here. We want to be able to move in and quickly capitulate Albania but the rest of these troops are actually going to go up here next to Austria. So we're going to port them all the way around through Gibraltar and they will be helping us to conquer Austria and then from Austria we'll be able to push down into Italy. So this plan works very well. I've never had an issue with it so far so yeah just cross your fingers I guess but I don't think there's much risk of failure with this. Armored trains now let's get it. All right force farmers into factories is done. Next up paying our back our debts back in bulk. <laughs> paying back our debts in bulk. There we go. All right after that I think we might I'd like to if we can actually bypass this fiscal responsibility. If you have completely paid off your debts, you know what? Maybe not. Maybe that doesn't work because it looks like you only bypass it if you default on your financial obligations. So we might still have to do that one. But either way, we do want to get to bedrock of Balkan financial stability as soon as possible because we are going to be eventually fighting a lot of the Balkan states, including Austria. So it will lose some of our potential people to gain factories from <laughs> by doing so. All right. So anyways, paying back our debts in bulk. All right. Uh, justification on Albania is now done. So we can declare war whenever. And we're going to call Germany into that war fairly quickly as well. So our single cavalry is ready to attack. We don't have any garrison for like Athens or Peloponnese or anywhere else, but it will take a while for Italy to be able to even set up a naval invasion. And I think they're a little bit wary because then they'll be at war with Germany as well, which makes them slightly nervous. All right, so let's do this. Declare war on Albania. And we're going to let it run a little bit here. And then, okay, once Italy joins, that means we can do another justification. So we're going to do one on Lower Austria, and that will only take 10 days, which is awesome. All right, so we're going to just move in and take all the victory points from Albania. You can see the Albanians are moving into our territory. It doesn't matter, though. All right, we can call the Germans in as well, and we should quickly capitulate these guys. Oh, another thing we can do, we flexible organization. That's going to be good to give us extra 5% speed. Look at our cavalry go, and bye-bye Albania. All right, we got some guns from that as well, which is nice, 
And we have 27 war score. Germany has six. All right, we'll take the first land, take the second land, and we're done. GG, Albania. <laughs> very, very easy war right there. So we can send this cavalry down to Athens now. That'll be perfectly fine. We'll just set it there and let it defend. What else do we need now? Oh no, that's going to be way, way ahead of time. That So that's not going to work out for us. I wanted to check that just in case. All right, so our justification should be almost done. A few more days here. And once that one finishes, you do want to do something else right away. And actually one other thing too, let's do a war propaganda while we have the PP to do so. We have 100 extra PP banked right now after doing that. So we want to do a justification on the United States just to boost the tensions. We want to get those as high as possible so we can start requesting Lend-Lease. So because we can start requesting Lend-Lease soon, we want to improve relations with Poland, improve relations with Hungary, and let's get military access with them as well just because we can. Who else would be good? Well, there's some nations we got to improve relations with anyways later because of doing this focus. So I mean, Hungary will count, Yugoslavia will count. So let's do Yugoslavia and Romania and then Turkey as well because we need to improve relations with all of those guys anyways. I'd like to do Bulgaria, but we actually can't improve relations with them enough to actually get any free civs from them because they consider us, because we, they hold our, okay, so we hold something that they have claims on, which is these. And then we're also considered incongruous neighbors. So we can't actually improve relations with them enough for it to matter. Potentially if we could get agency, but we don't have enough factories to even do that. So that's not going to be a factor. All right. So our justification is done. We can go ahead and declare war on Austria. Let's get our air force up there as well. So we're going to move these up into this airport. We're going to have them do air support and air superiority, and we'll give them more ground crews as well. All right. And we're going to call Germany into that war right away as well. There we go. They're called in and we're going to move with as much speed as possible to Vienna. We want to get into Vienna and let's attack Salzburg. Actually, we could just do an all out attack and just go aggressive. They do have most of the line covered, but there's a few gaps and we're going to exploit those as fast as possible. All right. So next up, fiscal responsibility. And let's see. Okay. We're still doing one debt payment, another debt payment to the French. At that point, we'll only need to do three large debt payments. Our war goal actually finished. I actually didn't want it to, but it's okay. It's fine. We're just going to let that war goal expire because we don't want to actually attack the United States. Other than that, though, we don't need to do any more war goals for a while now. So we're just going to chill. Vienna will fall soon. Linz is going to be falling before too long. And Germany is sending a lot of troops. And there goes Austria. All right, so we got roughly half the war score. That's not terrible. So we're going to make a puppet of Austria. No, Germany. Yeah, I can't unfortunately contest that. So we're going to have to forfeit. We did get these other two states. That's something at least. And we can do war reparations and we can do resource, right? Oh, there's no resources here. All right, well, fair enough. Germany's going to get all of that's very sad, but it is what it is. We still got ourselves a little puppet and there are some factories in there at least. Germany wants to send us some goodies now. We're going to accept that. And once we have our relations high enough with these other people, we can create more of a deficit just by recruiting some more divisions and we will request goods from them soon. All right, but right now we're going to be putting everything on the line. Well, except this one. We want to leave this down there. That one can chill. But the rest of our units, we want to get there as fast as possible and we're going to try to beeline to Rome and some of the other very important territories in Italy. So we're going to send these as fast as humanly possible. And there's a unit that's now trapped. That's actually really nice. We're going to try to keep these guys pinned at the least. All right, we're going to take Milan and try to get down to Genova. Oh, nice. We got Milan. All right, so we can also request some land from our allies, the Austrians. So we can get both of these states. They won't give us these other two because they do have claims on those. But the ones that they will give us, we will gladly accept. Okay, let's go ahead and request some goods from our friends that we've created. We want to do Poland, Yugoslavia. Romania does not like us at all because they're still democratic. Improving relations with them, that's going to be a lost cause. We might as well just stop that now. I believe because we have them as a puppet, so we should still be able to get factories from that focus. Turkey still has a decent amount of guns at this point. That's good. So we'll be building our army. we got to make sure to destroy these units. War score wise, we're doing all right so far. Germany just made a push through over here. Well done, Germany. I'm going to support that and try to get down so we can split them. How did we lose Milan? Seriously, we got to take that back. Okay. So Bedrock uh, Balkan financial stability is next. War score wise, we're still ahead. And there's the Mussolini is deposed. So we do have the most occupation score. I'm 99% certain that's all you need to get the puppet. And we hold the lion's share of the territory. Napoli's about to fall. 
And there it is, Civil War. Okay, once again, here comes that sweet, sweet lend lease. And we gotta get it this time. Seven times the charm, right? As they say. All right, so we're gonna justify Wargle on Lithuania. And let's let it run. So first up, Regno del Sud, them all these lands. We wanna give them these two at the least, and maybe Zara, and then we'll try to take Rhodes. And I'm not gonna care about these territories. Okay, so far, decent. Germany did try to take Littoral. We're gonna try to contest that and then keep taking some stuff. It seems like Germany is really focused on taking these territories. So I'm gonna do Piedmont and these two, and then they'll probably go for Benito. We'll see. Okay, they went for Emilia Romagna. So we're gonna contest and try to take that, and let's go for these ones. And now Germany's trying to take this one. Wonderful. All right, well, we'll contest that one as well. We do at least have a lot of points. We might not be able to get any fleet. Okay, well, getting the puppet is more important than a fleet anyways. So yeah, we're not going to get any, and Italy will retain that fleet. So it's okay. I mean, we could try to maybe take something over here. Nah, it's going to be way, way too pricey now. Oh, Ethiopia is taking all that stuff. That's funny. We got the Dodecanese back. We have a full Italian puppet. They have their fleet. Let's see how much fleet they still have. I hope it's all of it. Four battleships, 30 fat destroyers, four heavy cruisers, two light cruisers, 16 submarines. That's pretty good. So next up, we're going to be setting up to do a naval invasion of the United Kingdom. So before anything else, we will need to get tip of the spear so we're gonna do that right now that will let us do a larger naval invasion than we could otherwise they got guarantees on from both united kingdom and france pretty much near instantly so we'll be able to fight the allies very quickly just from a war goal on lithuania so we just need to get our fleet up in this region let's just group all of them put them up here and we will use those to gain naval supremacy in both of these regions we will need to request some forces from italy they have 21 divisions we'll just take all of those and we will be using some of these to help with our invasion as well. I am going to leave this cavalry here in Athens just in case. All right, so we're going to declare war on Lithuania. We're going to call Germany into the war and our troops are going to go into the London area. And after they make it, we'll send all the rest of the divisions over there as well. Let's go ahead and get unyielding defender and offensive doctrine. Okay, there we go. And the goal here is just going to be to capitulate the United Kingdom as fast as humanly possible. We're going to go in. We've got four troops that are making it. Okay, we do have a port because we have Portsmouth now. So we can go ahead and send everyone over. All right. And we're going to have all of these troops on the front line here. And we're just going to go as fast as possible. So it looks like the French are sending some troops over and that's not great. The idea is if we can win this before Britain gets all of its reinforcements up here, that's the plan. So we'll see what we can do. We've got a lot of ground to cover here. All right. There goes London. The one issue we're having though is that French are coming in. Okay. There's horror and fear. That's going to cause the Turks and the Romanians into the war. So we do need to prepare for this a little bit now. We've got to get some troops up here, leave five on that territory, and then these others will leave four for garrison duties. Oh, Germany wants to join that war as well, sure. And actually, Germany is pushing through the Maginot right now. <laughs> kind of crazy. I like it. They're actually making it through. So they're not at war with the Czechs or anything, so we could maybe call them into this war, and they can probably push into France. They even have troops down here, so should we call them in? Should we call the Italians in? That's what I'm asking. I guess let's do it because there's Germans there to bolster the lines. Naval invasion in Greece. Our troops weren't ready yet. Oh no, we lost Athens. That's not good. Okay, I'm gonna have to try to take that back. All right, let's try to get these units surrounded down here. If we can do that, they're gonna be in a lot of trouble. Major trouble. Yeah, we gotta keep this unit alive if possible. Although even if it does survive at this point, it's gonna be severely damaged. Three more days than that, so as long as the unit can survive. Oh, what? Just instantly destroyed. That was bogus. We still had a bunch of time left. Yeah, I don't know what that was about, but we're still doing good. We just got to keep surrounding all these troops and taking more territory. Germany's also stopping anything that's invading. That's good too. Yeah, I'm biting off more than I can chew here. I just want to go fast. The speed is of the essence. So this is the reason why I'm taking these risks, but it's not always paying off for me. All right, so the UK is currently 60% towards capitulation. Not too shabby. Oh, yes. We got them. And there's two French troops up here too. Okay, so next up, we're gonna do, we're gonna do justification on the Netherlands. And that should allow us to then push through Netherlands, then Belgium, then France. I was not certain this was going to work because the British are not weak. They're certainly not weak. And now we're 60% towards capitulation still. We've got to push these guys out. That's gotta be priority number one. All right, boys, get over here. We gotta dislodge these guys. But man, look at how many French troops are distracted from the Germans right now. So that's really good. Uh-oh, Czechoslovakia 
just join. No, that's really, really bad. Because now Germany's going to have to plug that gap. They've got to do their best to do that, to try to stop them. All right, so I'm going to put all the planes over here into this airport, and we're going to attack as much as we can. Not too shabby on the amount of extra planes that we got. Oh, we don't have enough manpower. We have zero manpower. <laughs> all right, fair enough. Oh, we can fix that, though. Here, request garrison support. That should fix the, the issue there. Oh, yeah, Germany's abandoning this front. That's really, really bad. Germany, no. Okay, Fodorato is next. All right, we did mop those up, so that's good. Okay, there's the justification complete. And if we can knock these British out, we'll be in much better shape over here. So we'll get our troops down, and as soon as they all are able to shuffle back, then we'll just attack the Netherlands. All right, let's do this. So next justification is going to be on Belgium, and we need to get troops. Oh, we got to call Germany in as well. This is not good right here. Don't like this at all. There's one single Italian troop to stop the tide. Uh-oh, Germany's getting mopped up down here too. Yeah, that's also not good. Rotterdam's done. Let's do a justify war goal against Luxembourg. Oops, nice. All right, that's it. There's Netherlands. All right, so I'm gonna do something a little bit weird here. We're gonna do all of these like kind of more militia type units and we're just gonna put them on a fallback line. Like, we want this tile. Let's try that again. All right, this tile, there we go. All the way down to Maastricht. So all seven of those divisions are just meant to hold the line so we can have railways that will uh, connect and go through here. We can also do some railways to try to connect them to all the other hubs that are around here then as well. But we want to make sure the supplies will keep running and we're just going to put all of our units that are not on the defense, so all 29 units, they're going to go on this tile and we are going to just try to push through Belgium quickly from the very bottom tile all the way down to Paris. We got to move with super, super speed. We don't want to waste any time. We can't do normal payments anymore, apparently. That's depressing. Okay. All right. Well, let's get all of our troops down here. 36 on one tile. Let's go. And we're going to tell them to go as fast as possible as well. So yeah, we have zero supplies. That's normal <laughs> for what we're doing. Belgium is guaranteeing the independence of Luxembourg. Oh, okay. It doesn't matter. Let's do this. I want to get into Antwerp really quickly. All right. So it looks like most of the French troops are here and here. I think they did still have some troops down here, although they're probably pulling those back, any that were down there. So we'll have to be busy. Uh, wait, why does, how did the UK end up getting that? That's weird. Oh, well, yeah, they have no supplies here. So I like that. All right. So we're going to try to elongate the line. Oh, okay. We have the manpower now. Let's add some more of these. Every single type of plane that we can possibly get. <laughs> we're going to throw everything we got into the Air. Okay, there's the Luxembourg. Yeah, we'll declare war on them. Sure. It's only what one more unit. Yeah, so we gotta go really fast because I guarantee France is pulling more units up here right now. So the faster we can get in, the more we can push. And yeah, you can already see there's some British, French troops all filing in. All right, so we do need to do some more justifications as well. Like we need one on Bulgaria and we need one on Yugoslavia. Those are very important. That will be how we get our cores. So right now France is not that close to capitulation, but they will massively go up if we can actually take Paris. So that's the key. Yeah, lots and lots of people in the factions. Oh, you know what? I think our railways are not connected. Yeah, yeah, that only partially went. So we've got work to do to connect the rest of this. But we have so few fact civilian factories. It's an absolute struggle. All right, how are we looking over here? We're holding the line all right. Justification is done on Bulgaria. Let's do one on Yugoslavia now. A decent amount of British troops. Kind of surprised how many there are. Oh, there's the fall of Rome. Yeah, that's not great. Oh, and there's some Turkish troops up here too. We really got to hurry. Declare war on Bulgaria. We do want to get some more participation against them. Oh, this is so frustrating. They must have landed like one or two troops and then just started shuffling all of them up. Oh, nice. We got Belgium. Okay, well, that's really good. So maybe if we can hold the line up here and keep the rest of that, then we'll be all right. Next justification is done. I'm so wary to actually fight them. It's going to be horribly dangerous. We just need Paris. That's literally it. And possibly like Le Havre or reams but ridiculously close to winning it's gotta hold the line hold the line okay get in there oh paris fell <gasps> 99 percent okay we gotta declare war on yugoslavia because now if we just take one more territory it's over it's jover <laughs> luxembourg is standing strong yeah the uk is still considered capped so it looks like they have to reclaim their capital and be at most 10 percent towards capitulation so as long as we can hold the north then we're fine <laughs> which is definitely some silly nonsense, but I like it. All right, got to push them off. The last, the final push. Push. Yes. Oh, yeah. So first of all, we're going to take all of our cores that we possibly will need. So that's going to be Romania, Yugoslavia, Bulgaria, Turkey, Syria, Lebanon, Palestine, Jordan, uh, Sinai, Egypt, all the way down to here, I believe. Oh, no. What a time for a crash. All right, so apparently they didn't want me to, to be able to do what I just did, so... <laughs> 
<laughs> they didn't like that. All right, we'll just do this again. That's just the ending. Should be doable. Got to take that territory. We've got to hold up here. And I guess we could go to War Economy now. That would give us some actual civs and maybe we can finally complete that railway. <laughs> okay, no, I did already attack them. That's good. There it is. All right, no, no collapsing on me this time. <laughs> All right, so 3175 to Germany's 2970. And like I was saying, we got to get all of Yugoslavia. We need all of Turkey. Cyprus will be one of our cores. You know what? I can't remember if Malta is, but I'm going to take it. We also need Tunis, Gabes, and I don't think we need any of this. Actually, I'm going to bring all this up just to show what can be cored by Byzantium. All right, so this is what we're looking at. Yeah, it's just Gabez or Gabes and Tunis, all of Italy except Sardinia. Okay, Malta is not a core, but we do need Cyprus. And then, like I was saying, all the way down to Egypt, at the very tip of Egypt. And wait, I thought that was a core. I thought Southern Bessarabia is a core. This might be old, actually, because I'm almost 99% certain that Southern Bessarabia is a core. There we go. <laughs> that looks better. Everything is pretty much the same, except that Southern Bessarabia is included then. But like I was saying earlier, we need all of Turkey, Bulgaria, Yugoslavia, most of Romania, Cyprus, Syria, Lebanon, Jordan, Israel, Palestine, Egypt, and then all the way over Tunis and Gabez. And then I think we're good. Anything we get after that is just going to be fluff. I mean, we could take some fleets if we want to. We can get some puppets like a free French puppet or a uh, United Kingdom puppet. Either of those will be very useful. All right. So we took 62 states. Germany took 147. But but we got some really, really nice puppets. So we have Greek France, Greek Britain, Greek Czechoslovakia, Greek Romania, Greek Australia, Greek Unitary Canada, as well as South Africa, a <laughs> bunch of others. Oh, somehow Germany still ended up with this state. That's all right. We got the lion's share of it. And we now have a ton of divisions with Britain. And I believe we got some, yeah, we have a bunch of French divisions as well. So we are now immensely, immensely powerful. We can basically do whatever we want. <laughs> we can fight Poland, and then we can fight the Soviets. But what I'm going to actually do is now focus all of my efforts on reducing Italy to a reduce their autonomy down to annexed. That way we can just have that land. And yeah, we also need Libya to be able to get all of our cores as well. But we can do revive Byzantium right now. So we are going to do that. And we're going to finish up Fodoratoi. We're almost done with that. And at that point, we can then do Nene Kikaman, the dies cast, and then finally Byzantine Thamata. So I'm hoping in that time we can have have Greek Italy all the way reduced to annexed. We do have a ways to go, but it's a worthy goal. So we're gonna do our best to do that. So we're gonna start producing all the military factories we can in their territory. We could also do infrastructure. We could do forts. There's all kinds of things that you can do to reduce their autonomy. So we don't really need <laughs> any of these things that we were building anymore. We're just gonna focus solely on Italy. So first off, we have 841 to demote them. Let's send them some Lend-Lease and we will demote them in that way. So maybe like 100, that's 560. Then the rest of it, we can just do by building in their territory. So right now we have 40 factories. This is about to skyrocket. So we'll let it run a little bit here. 153. So that's a little bit better, I'd say. I'm going to build a ton of armored trains. That way I can go ahead and send Lend Lease of armored trains to Italy. Beautiful. 51. That's perfection. All right. Let's actually import from France. That's going to be way, way cheaper. <laughs> there we go. All right. So Fodorato is done and Ikikman is next. So we have 210 days to get all the way down to Byzantine Thamata. I'm not sure, actually. Let's see. We're about 120 days into 1938. So I think with 210 days, that should be less than a year. We should have the Byzantine Thamata done by the end of 1938. And then hopefully we can get every single core still in 1938. And just to brag and dab on Germany a little bit. 136 factories for Germany. Yeah, shameful Germany. 153 for us. So part of the reason for that just that Germany chooses to get states like India rather than making really really nice puppets that have a lot of factories so like we got all of Canada we got all the industrialized states basically like we got Australia we got France we got Britain and Czechoslovakia even Romania so pretty much every single state that has a lot of factories came our puppet during that one funny thing though <laughs> look at this 33% even on war economy like oh it's so painful because we still we're not basically because we're speedrunning everything we're not fixing a lot of the problems of our nation <laughs> so yeah we just have to deal with that all right sending another shipment now we're sending a bunch of armored trains that we've now built and a bunch of more convoys so we still have a thousand and sixty and we should be able to we can 
can reduce their autonomy really soon now. And then the next shipment should come in after that then. Well, I hope so. It's gonna be close actually. <laughs> it's cutting it close. So we'll reduce our autonomy and then the next shipment should come in. There we go. All right, they are now a puppet. Now we need 999 for the next level. Ouch, that's gonna take a while. I wish we had more sieves, but you can see we, we're losing 51 right now, which is brutal. Oh, I wish I could give back the garrison support. You know what? I bet I can actually give back all the units if I delete these. I'm not sure if that will help with autonomy or not, but it's probably better to be safe than sorry. All right, so we've got them down to 15 right now before we can get them to an integrated puppet. We need to send some more shipments, whatever we have, basically. Let's send all of our fuel as well. We'll get them to integrated soon. I also just changed to, rather than building mills in there, I should have been doing this in the first place, just building sieves because we get 25% of their sieves once we get them to integrated. So that's gonna be infinitely more helpful than putting mills in their territory. Oh, there's reduced autonomy. Okay, we're at 168 right now. And now we're at 102 mils and 95 sieves. So we're just going to add this to more armored trains, of course. Yeah, I'm not sure that we're going to get this in time because we need another thousand. And we're already on the last focus right now. So we may still be able to get this done before 1939, but we'll see. Okay, so good news. We got Byzantine Thamata done and we can now do suppress subjects, which reduces their autonomy autonomy I think daily so that will help and we can actually get some more cores now too so that will also help in getting us more sieves and more mills so we're at 201 right now those two done 251 so that did help with our sieve situation oh and we can actually take over the axis at this point too if we want to <laughs> that'd be kind of funny but I don't think it's gonna be worth doing all right November 30th let's send one last shipment It'll be everything that we have built personally Ugh, it's not it's probably not good enough uh, we're gonna be cutting it close though we have a month we'll do our best no! <laughs> December 31st, 1938. We can't quite do it yet, but we are super, super close. 215 more. I think it's just going to be one more shipment and then we'll be good. So that is so sad. The dream is dead. All right. So February 1st, 1939, reduce the autonomy. And there we have it. There's that beautiful Byzantine empire. All right. So let's get our last course here. Click and click. Let it run. How many factories? Is that actually right? That can't be right. Didn't we have 302 before? <laughs> Maybe it is right. I mean, I've let it run for a while now, so I assume that's got to be right. Yeah, I guess that's right. So there you have it. 302 factories in 1939. Very, very early 1939. I think maybe we could have done it if we had optimized a little bit more. We might have been able to hit 1938, but man, that was really, really pushing it. But I'm still pretty happy with this overall. 302 factories in 1939 as the, the entirely core Byzantine Empire with puppets all over the place. Ability to assume the, fact the leadership of the faction. Let's go ahead and just do that right now there we go so now we are the head of the axis and we could very easily if we wanted to kick germany and defeat germany we could fight poland we can fight the soviets we can fight whoever we want we will easily be strong enough like just look at this equipment now that is beautiful so wouldn't be hard at all we have a ton of troops from our different nations as well and all of them are strong even in their own right so it's pretty insane so i hope you guys enjoyed this little speed run that we did here and yeah, I hope to see you guys again soon. Bye-bye. I just reloaded into the game and I instantly got assuming direct control. So apparently I had never taken over the Axis faction or whatever the requirements are for that. <laughs> Uh, but I was just coming back into the game because I realized that I never did this whole national referendum and I set that up way earlier and I never gave any payoff for that. So let's get that done real quick. All right, there we go. Got our whole national referendum. Gains fascism defeated for 730 days. Nice. All right, we get this kind of strange looking flag and Themistocles Sephulis is now back as our leader. And we are now the East Roman Democratic Republic. Uh, you know what? I, I think it might, yeah, 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 yeah. So this is another way you can get this achievement as well then. Ah, uh, yes. So it's, this is madness. Fulfill the Megali idea and then form greater Greece. So that would accomplish that for us right there. So there you have it, Form Greater Greece. It doesn't even change the name or anything, unfortunately. But yeah, there we go. So <laughs> that's the true end of this video then. Bye-bye.